Well, welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, today we're going to do just a little bit in RDWorks. Um, I haven't done much recently because it's been the run up to Christmas and I've had quite a bit on. But uh, I've got a little project that I thought you might be interested in. In fact, there might even be a business in it for some of you entrepreneurial guys. Um, my daughter recently asked me to manufacture a sign for her house and I decided it might be a nice idea to make it an illuminated sign. It's several meters away from the front of her house. Uh, there's a lawn and a hedge and it needs to sit outside of the hedge. There's no electrical power out there. So what I plan to do is use some solar powered LED string lights and back illuminate a clear perspex sign and that's what you see here on the screen. You can see across the bottom we've got little cutouts for all the LEDs to shine upwards. It's going to be manufactured from 8mm perspex and it will be mounted in an aluminium, probably a square box section across the bottom, which I shall clamp on using these screw holes that I've put here. First of all I haven't got the LEDs yet, they're on their way. I think they're coming from China but they should be here sometime next week. I'm keen to get started on the project and so temporarily probably going to use some battery powered LEDs to simulate the situation um, because I'm keen to see what it looks like. The problem with programming is I've already designed this font and within my CAD program I've offset the outer shape so that I've effectively made it into a hollow font. But obviously what I want to do here is I want to cut the outside shape and the holes but I want to engrave or deep engrave these pieces these parts of the letter here now I know that engraving takes place on closed shapes and the question I've got in my own mind at the moment is which closed shape is this program going to choose for example is it going to choose these inner closed shapes or is it, going to close, is it going to choose the outer closed shape to engrave on? We'll have to see how intelligent the program is and whether I've got to find some way of swapping it from one to the other. I think the first thing I must do is to put this on a separate layer and we'll put it on a blue layer and as you can see at the top here the blue layer is a cut layer so we'll immediately change that from a cut layer with a speed of one millimeter per second um, we'll take that up to around about, I will run that at about 100 millimeters a second because I want quite a deep cut and I'm going to put the power up to my maximum of 65 percent. That just happens to be the maximum power for my machine. If I go more than that I shall overdrive the, the, the tube. Um, and the laser through mode is off. So there we go. Let's just see what happens. Oh, I forgot. I left it as a cut. It should be a scan. Is there an output? Yes, there is. Is it going to be cut? No, it's not. It's going to be a scan mode. Wow. That's very convenient. It's automatically filled that in for me. So that's the area that's going to scan. Brilliant. I've got to do anything. So let's set the cutting speed. This is 8mm perspex that I'm going to be using and the speed for that, well I have cut 8mm perspex at about 5 or 6 millimeters per second but it barely made it through. So to be absolutely sure I'm going to reduce the speed I think to probably 3 millimeters a second. Now I know that I cut 10mm perspex at 2mm per second. It's going to take an age but I'd rather it went through cleanly. Um, cut mode, 65%, 65%, that's perfect. So there we go. So there's the, there's the basic cutting parameters sorted out. Now what we've got to do is to sort out the order. The order is wrong up here in the layers at the moment because we want the cut to take place second. So we want scanning to take place first. So we'll order those layers up there we then go into edit cut property and what we've got hundreds of elements in here well I say hundreds we've got 31 elements in there so we'll forget that for a minute 
before we go into that mode what we will do is first of all uh, we will box some of these items in I think that's automatically going to take care of itself but we will put that into a group we will then put the holes and I'm now going to hold down the shift key after clicking the first hole and then we'll add to that group by clicking on each one of these holes okay so that's all the holes and we'll put those into another group and then finally we'll click on the outside make sure that it's red all the way around and there's no breaks in it and then we will put that into a group and so when we now go to cut mode cut properties we should find only three elements in there that's better than 31 isn't it and the first thing we're going to cut I think it would happen anyway but the first thing that we're going to cut is element number two the second thing we're going to do is the holes and then the third thing that we're going to do is the outside shape okay that's the program written it's as simple as that so we'll save that to a file and we'll meet up at the machine now I'm purposely trying to get quite a deep burn here which is why I'm going quite slowly um, because I'm after more of an engraving type cut rather than etching cut I've also left the protective film on because as you can see it produces um, some fumes and, and condensate on the surface and I shall hopefully be able to peel it off and produce a nice clean surface after it's finished Now I've been ultra safe cutting around this outline because um, I don't want to fail to get it out first time. So I'm only running at about 3 millimeters per second. And I know I cut 10 millimeters at 2 millimeters per second, so I'm pretty confident I should be able to cut this 8 mil. And uh, when you can see the smoke coming out underneath, that's always a good sign. Now I think I am going to have a problem because I didn't check that my holes were going to go in before I cut the outside. But it might be slow but it's doing the job and that's the important thing here. Time is not an issue. I'm not having to pay for it or charge anybody for it. Yes, there's quite a little drag on the cut which is the thing that's actually making the edges um, non-square. It's not the fact that the beam isn't square it's the fact that once the channel gets established off angle then the um, the beam keeps traveling down that way by the look of it. You can see as you come across the front there how the beam is dragging behind at the bottom. Maybe you'll see it across the top there but the light is just wrong there at the moment. You can clearly see the beam dragging there. And it did come out cleanly. It just popped out. So I'm very pleased with that. And when we peel the plastic off, yeah, we've got nice clean edges and nice white letters, which is what I want. Well, here we are. I've just rigged up some battery LEDs. I've only got half the LEDs that I'm planning to use. You can probably look along the bottom there and see the spaces in between the LEDs, but I think that the um, solar powered LEDs will be a lot less bright than the battery powered ones. But even so, that's not a bad sign, is it? So I'm looking forward to getting the solar powered lights in a few days time. And in the meantime, I'll have a look at making a frame for the bottom where I can mount all the wires. So it's a very good start to this project.